Hello the channel, welcome back everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, still quite buzzing myself after the Celtic European game last night. Played really well. Uh, enjoyed the game. Thanks to Quinny for inviting me along as well and thanks to Sorare for the tickets. So uh, a wee bit later doing the lineup builder than I had planned. I haven't, even, I haven't even looked at my teams yet to be honest. So what we're going to do is um, get the next competition winner or the last competition winner for October picked and um, we'll run that through um, Twitter picker. Once I've done that, um, obviously I'm going to contact that person. If we don't get in touch quickly enough, then I'll just pick the all-star team for that person and they can keep whatever um, is a win from that. Um, and then we'll, we'll pick some teams. Um, in terms of the midweek, um, I think the current competition winners on for like Tier 2 or Tier 3. Um, so Man City... Um, not doing as well as expected, but one three one and and Rodri hit on a hundred, which always sort of helps as well. So anyway, let's get the f competition winner picked. Um, as I said, this will be the last one for the competition for October, and we'll decide later on what we're doing if there's any further competitions, which will probably be around about Christmas or whatever. We'll see. Um, what the story is, what the lay of the land is, um. So everybody's all loaded up. 164 entries. Da, da, da. Good luck all. And the winner is Sorry our Talent Finder. Congratulations, man. Um you get the, the winner of the All Star Limited, which is a guy I've known for a while actually. Um so Sorry our Talent FI1. So obviously been around since um, the old football index days and everything as well. Congratulations, mate. I'll message you soon. Um, hopefully you've got back time to pick the All-Star Limited team. So anyway, let's get on to doing some selections and stuff here. Probably have a quick look actually at the All-Star um, Limited team first. Um, so I'm not going to actually pick it, but you know, just kind of give you an idea, obviously, in terms of um, what type of availability. We've got, so selections wise, Man United, Man City, a lot of good games this weekend, eh? so that's pretty good. Um, Liverpool against Nottingham Forest, that stands out. Um, I was going to like Trent to, to go with, uh, maybe Allison as well. Um, so our talent finder, I think, is a Leeds fan, so now you could pick Mesley if you want. Um, but Leeds are not, they're not brilliant at clean sheets these days. Um, so like Trubin, etc. here. Celtic played very well against Atletico Madrid, um, also hammered hearts. Scored very well, even though we didn't get um, clean sheets in those games. So pretty reassuring, pretty happy with the system that Brendan Rodgers is playing. Um, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Yes, got a good weekend. That's awesome. Um, there are some great games. Um, so these are the good options here as well. You know, obviously Celtic are always a good option. Come on. <laughs> What an atmosphere last night as well. I think I'm kind of losing my voice a bit. Um, Liam Scales, outstanding. Really good. Um, so lo loads of sort of good options here. We could go a Celtic stack as well, you know. But um, Liverpool, good sort of home game and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, Matt Riley cards to use. Um, you know, here in Dewsbury Hall. So you could do a sort of Liverpool defence. Um, Dewsbury Hall, Madison. Um, a sort of midfield. And then... Phew, Kane against Darmstadt or, you know, um, you could suppose you could risk Callum at Man United. Man United not really, not really been that good, to say the least. There we go. So I'm not going to go into the limited too much anyway. I just did a quick preview in terms of what's um, happening. We'll, we'll have a look at the, the sort of top teams, um, have a wee look at the under-23s. And I'm not planning to spend much time tonight. I'll need to do a wee bit of work on the teams and stuff, so I'll probably be doing some of that stuff tomorrow morning, which is going to be too late to get the video out. So, um, in terms of um, All Star Unique, um, kind of looking at that this weekend, I think it's, it's a frustration as well having Allison and Robbo's done his shoulder in, so that's a shame. But also, um, Sparta Rotterdam playing RKC, um, I think that kind of stands out as a pretty good fixture. Sparta scored very well in the last game in RKC. Um, I don't think are that good. So, you know, here you're, we're looking at pretty restricted, obviously, to the unique options and things. So, Robertson's out. No. Ryan's would go nicely with Ollage. 
Phil Max and Wigand are not reliable. Um, and then it's a case of so sort of Matt O'Reilly, <laughs> the jewel in the crown just now, <laughs> the absolute jewel in the crown. What a card, man. Absolutely sensational player. 92 against um, Atletico Madrid. Like, brilliant. Um, and nah, nothing really too strong there, I don't think, in connection with um, the other uniques. So I don't like going in with um, having a sort of super rare instead of going in with a unique. So, you know, maybe one day I'll have a Calmax unique and I'll just slot that in there and I'll be absolutely delighted. Delighted! But I don't. So we're going to have to go to another plan. So what do we do? Do we maybe play for the, the Celtic clean sheet? The disadvantage of that is then I'd probably as well putting Joe Hart in here and I want to kind of go with Ollie and Bryans. Um, Who's the kind of man of the moment? I think probably has to be Szymanski right now. I quite like playing Szymanski with Tadic, etc. So that usually works pretty well. Um, but they are kind of rotating a wee bit just now. Um, Fenerbahce and, yeah, I mean, there's only one captain here. You can't captain the super rares anyway. So two very strong super rares and three very strong uniques. I wouldn't say Brian's is very strong. Um, obviously, he's got the lowest average. But... Um, Quite a good home game. Might come up with a goal. You don't know. So that's a professional selection. Anyway, um, I could drop some of those uniques down and start strengthening teams, which, you know, that'll be another strategy option. But that's that's possible. And the rewards up there are very good. Um, All-star. Um, super rare. So um, it's a case of do a sort of run the Celtic stack in here. Do a run... Celtic stacking challenger. The only downside with using Ollage in the top competition is don't have a lot of strength to go um, challenger super rare as well. So um, I don't know. I know this is not always relevant for everyone. <laughs> so I've like good to have these issues or not issues, but selection headaches or whatever. But it's just kind of good to explain the thought process, what you're doing, where you're using cards, all that type of stuff. And it might become relevant if you're playing rares and you're moving up to super rares, that type of thing. Um, so, Joe Hart um, could play him in here or could play Allison Now, my, my thoughts with Allison is that I, I kind of, yeah, it's a good home game. So, I want to play Allison in there with, you know, like in the champion with like Trent and Salah and stuff. And I don't have a lot of outstanding champion Europe super rares, which are pretty expensive things to have. So, I may well just forgo a wee bit challenger um, super rare and just play the old Celtic stack in here. Now, the best person in the Celtic stack is in All-Star Unique, but when I say the best person, we can still fill something out that's pretty pretty good here. So I don't have a Matt O'Reilly super rare, um, which is kind of an expensive thing at the moment as well. Um, so in terms of the midfield, it's probably just going to be a case of Lining up Cal Mac. Cal Mac's been scoring very well domestic games. Um and then I've used the Fura unique as well. So that's um so it's not really sort of ideal. And again that that's what I was saying regarding the strategy side of things. So from a strategy perspective, then using all those cards up there, okay, that's that's like the big hit and all star unique. But you know, it's competitive weekend. Is that going to work out? So what I could do is I could just say, okay, I'm going to abandon that. I'm going to max out the lower divisions. And, you know, maybe rather than um, going for the all-star unique, I could just do this, right? Um, and I could just go... Celtic are scoring a lot of goals just now, right? So I could just play that. Um, so just do that. Um, the advantage of that is, so just from a strategy point of view, then what we could do is something like this. So just kind of disregard the all-star unique and just think, okay, it's a tough weekend, maybe not the time to chance it, um, and and start using these guys in here instead. Um, so that would be an alternative. So, so this is going to be pretty strong for um, 
Yeah, it's going to be pretty strong. Now, see, I've now got some choice. I've got Ryan's, and I can also use Furuhashi Unique somewhere as well. So, Ryan's, I could use his Super Rare, and I could just move the Unique to somewhere else, or um, could use, like, Vickers. Again, I'd probably want to use him elsewhere, just from a perspective of lining him up with Joe Hart. Um, it's interesting. So... And Joe Hart's no star super rare. So that's where you're starting to make some decisions. And my brain isn't working. I was obviously up too late last night. <laughs> um Rostovsky is getting slow promoted. Yeah. Usually you know if Rostovsky's gonna play. Um the reason I'm doing this is because I want to play for a hashi unique, right? So, you know, I want to get a unique into this division. Um I'm I'm using the Furuhashi Super Rare in the other division, so I want to sort of max that out a wee bit. And then, in terms of the last one to use, Sugawara is my, one of my favourite under-23s players. Orkin Kokshu should be back, so that's kind of interesting. Bilal Kanus playing very well. Johnson, interesting one, not really been scoring as well as um, he has done sort of recently. I think it's kind of game-specific as well, you know. Um, like It's just... Some games don't work out as well for fullbacks, etc. Dies in Maeda, big head case that he is. Absolute head case, but he's going lots of, sort of goals, etc. at Celtic, so it's kind of interesting. Maybe it's the by another Joe Hart Super Rare. <laughs> he's getting old though. Neil is old as me. Um so it is something like that, you know. Um doesn't really play for the defensive pair in there, so I guess like I could just keep Rostovsky for somebody else, like and just do that. Um, so that kind of goes with the Celtic attack. The reason this is quite a good balance then from a strategy point of view is if Celtic do concede but score loads of goals, then actually I'm getting some benefit from that and I've got one option where it's got a different clean sheet option there and a really good captain choice. So actually I don't mind that. I'm going to sort of run that just now and then I'll run some other Celtic stacks elsewhere, which is a really awesome luxury to have. Um, we're dropping back down. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this tonight, uh, but I just want to pick some key teams out and always do prioritise, for example, under 23s. So, maybe he do it the way they just are. Oh, wrong button again. Move the heat back. So under 23s this weekend, Mesley against Huddersfield, pretty good game. Kim Jun-hoon, that's a reasonably good game. Um, Mozako is away at Tokyo. Maybe not the easiest. Trubin at home, that's, that's a bit of a standout. Um, but they didn't really do much midweek, but then that was probably part of the issue with score when Benfica conceded. Um, not really facing many shots. Panda at home, that seems a reasonable tie, though Utrecht scored a few goals against um, Ajax. <laughs> that's not really saying much these days, is it? Oh, Zach Kemen, St. Johnson against um, St. Man against St. Johnson. So St. Johnson pretty poor. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to play him in this sort of All-Star Plus team, but he'll be a pretty good one, I think, for the Caps. Um, so, I think in terms of home game, that's going to go with Tribune, to be honest. Like, that's going to be the selection there, I think. Um, I, I need to check on rotations and stuff. I'll see what the predictions are. I mean, I would like to go with the defensive stack, but I guess there's a wee bit of a risk that teams rotate a, a tad. Um, Silva played and also played for Portugal as well. Um, so in here, you know, Sukabara doesn't get much of a rotation. He played a lot, like, um, in terms of, um, he played tonight for AZ, um, who got humbled by Aston Villa, the mighty Aston Villa. Um, I guess here, I mean, of, like, I can keep O'Reilly for the Celtic stacks and maybe for 23s, etc. And I could get, just go all out and just go kind of Benfica, eh? <laughs> Just go, if that's such a word. Um... You know, and do that. And then, it's a case of the forward. Taki Kubo, what a win that was. Like, you just look, he's popped up right at the top of the averages. <laughs> um, so that's nice. Um, Musiala, really good home game. Might keep him for champ, just because, you know, well, it's a strong option there. Um, but, yeah, Bayern do rotate a wee bit as well, you know. Um, I think Thomas Muller was out or something. I can't remember exactly what happened. So, do we just roll out the new guy? Kubo's been excellent, hasn't he? 
Um, Doku could easily destroy Man United as well, but um, really nice options. Um, it feels as if a depth's really, like, really, really good. Kind of almost getting depth here, like I had in Limited or have in Limited, which is, you know, bloody good to have that in the rare side. Obviously, I'll need to check play sharper stuff and everything for these ones as well. Um, but yeah, go with this kind of Kubo captain there as well. Let me move myself. <laughs> I'm not in the right place. I can press confirm. So that's an interesting team. I'm going to pick one more. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip on to play sharper and explain the Celtic prediction as well. That should give people a bit of guidance in terms of what to do with Celtic stack. I think Celtic will take a good few goals off Hibs. We've taken a good few goals off Leicester Madrid. We've hammered hearts. Um, Hibs lost loads of goals to Rangers. David Marshall is absolutely right. He's rubbish. Anyway, he'll probably play like a probably like a hero now. An absolute hero. I think if you've got Celtic stacks this weekend, you know you're you're gonna be wanting to play them. So All Star Rare Plus. You know, I could do I want to just keep the two Allisons and just play them in, in champion. Um that's pretty interesting. Safanov, um nearly get confused with Safronov last weekend by Opta and everybody was in uproar. That he was he wasn't playing, and as it turns out, um, it was Safanov, but Opta had Safronov in. That's a bell to it. Um, I wonder whether I should just kind of run a Celtic stack in the All Star. You know, um, I don't know about that. Like, um, it's competitive over the weekend. That's the the issue. Um, Hemmings, I said, is probably going to come in for. The caps. So looking at games, Rodrigo Ray against Arsenal de Sarandi. Rodrigo Ray is an excellent goalkeeper. Um, so if I'm just gonna kind of go a bit more optimal here and not go for a stack, could sort of run that. Um, I think a Celtic stack probably playing challenger. I mean, it, you know, I play challenger, so there's a chance of winning some good Celtic cards and everything there as well. So we'll probably just leave it for that. Um, so yeah, why don't we just pick? kind of non-challenger and then we'll, we'll see what happens from there. Rodrigo Ray, so we've got him in here. We've picked the all-star, so big morning freak he go in here. I mean, this guy's been, been terrific. Absolutely awesome. So he has really, really good. Um, the advantage you're running the Celtic stack and challenger is that you've got Celtic stack and challenger. That's, that's genius. Come to the channel for genius fucking comments like that <laughs> but yeah I mean I can run, run Joey Veerman in here and Ajax have been absolutely rotten so you know that allows me to run that here um, in terms of Joey Veerman rather than running him in Challenger and most of the Joey Veermans probably go in Challenger but yeah I suppose people use him in All Star as well um, but I'd imagine it'd be more focused towards, towards Challenger Salah is probably going to go in the Champion stack but Ferrari might even make his way into the, the Liverpool stack, which is quite interesting. Um, I haven't used Big Felipe, the big bald shagger, in the other ones, so I could play him in here. So this is just a weird team in it, but like Joy Veerman's going to be the captain, right? So again, Douglas Santos, you know, he's a challenger type guy, but I'm going to be going Celtic there, then I could do that. And then Joey Veerman's going to be the captain. So when you look at the averages here, like, you know, 56 average, 68 average super rare, 63 average super rare, 72 average rare, and Joey Veerman um, will probably do about 200 against IX. So that's looking awfully good. So that that's, you know, it's, it's interesting sometimes to mix it up, you know. Um, if you have these options, then then great if you have these options and limited they're becoming a bit cheaper just now because everybody's shat their pants and um, which is a completely different subject from lineup building anyways switch the screen not talking about people being incontinent and all that sort of stuff on so rare and um, or moaning and um, big cry babies i'm only kidding like i'm doing the pod with um, pen i think probably recording sunday or monday probably monday now that'll be out next week and we'll, we'll chat through that stuff so i'm just being a bit flippant there so Celtic, first thing to note here is Celtic looked quite tired at the end of the game last night. I mean, I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. Like, But when I say look tired, they just put a lot of effort into the game, which is 
understandable. And I, I thought they were, I mean, we were awesome in the first half. Um, and that effort maybe not petered out, but um, Simeone made some tactical changes, paid off, Atletico scored, and then Rodgers then made some changes. One thing to point out here, and the reason why all these percentages have went down a peg by 5%, is that before the Hearts game, Rodgers said, I'll not be able to play the, play the same team for the next like seven games or eight games. So Celtic are playing weekend against Hibs, we're playing midweek against St Mirren, then we've got another game. So... And then there's an R game in the Champions League away at Atletico Madrid. So there's naturally going to have to be a wee bit of management in minutes. So I still left Matt O'Reilly at 95%. Like, you know, I'm not saying he might not come off at 70 minutes or whatever, but, I, you know, I think he started pretty much every game for Celtic this season and he did get a wee bit of a rest over an international break. Never played first game. He wasn't in Denmark squad. Then he got called up and then he never played a... Small amount of minutes to the bench, like he should have made his debut. So Palma, he came off as a tactical switch, got him at eighty five percent. Pretty sure he should start. Furuhashi ninety. Furuhashi did come off um first out of Furuhashi and Maeda. So is it a game? Maybe he'll rest Maeda. I don't know. The guy's just the Duracell bunny. He just runs about absolutely mental, and I don't know where he gets the energy from. But. Rogers been quite stable with the lineup, so I don't think he'll do anything too daft away from home. And if he does go with this lineup, then I think you would be expecting some rotations midweek. Paulo Bernardo, people are saying, well, what about Turnbull and what about um, Iwata and all that sort of stuff? Well, Bernardo, come on for Hitati. Hitati is injured. No news about the length of time, but it looked like it's a kind of muscle tweak, maybe even a hammy. So maybe out for a few weeks, hopefully not too bad. So I think. Bernardo is the favourite to start. He did play pretty well on the ball. He wasn't as good as Hattati without the ball, and Madrid showed the quality there. But I think he's good enough to start against Hibs. Cal McGregor just hardly ever gets rested at all. You know, like you know, he just just plays, but he plays a more defensive role and maybe doesn't press as much as these guys in front. Um, so maybe doesn't expend as much energy. Taylor and Johnson again have downgraded them 85% just because they both put in a lot. Celtic went three at the back and the fullbacks were pushing forward. And Johnson, I don't think, is on vintage form just now. So at some point, Ralston might come in. And I think if the fullbacks start again, maybe um, the St. Mirren game might be a game where I'll be steering clear of the fullbacks just because, you know, we're playing those consecutive games and a home game would be a good chance to. Rotate scales and vickers again downgraded to ninety percent, and um, with the other option being Phillips, I guess it could be an argument for Blagger Belke as well. But he didn't come on. Phillips come on Champions League game, but I think that's pretty constant. So I think Hart, Vickers, and Scales will be really solid. There, Scales has been absolutely awesome. Um, not the best sore air scoring in the world against Atletico Madrid, but to be able to play that well against that quality of opposition and look so. Comfortable in the ball was awesome. So it's a pretty similar lineup. Um, no Hitati, Bernardo coming in. That's a prediction. I think we've had 11 out of 11 the last two games. So, you know, that's the sort of lines that were, were going down. Um, and so fingers crossed. So we'll, we'll end at that. Um, managed to squeeze 20 minutes out of it. So I'm sorry there's not been a lot of detail in the lineup building. I've just not really had any time with the Celtic game and everything we're on. But absolutely loved going to the game. Well done, um, sorry, our talent finder winning the, the comp. You're the last giveaway winner as well, so hopefully you collect something from the limited and I'll message you soon. Um, you can get that lineup picked and then we'll fire in the lineup so we'll go for a big weekend. So we'll have some alternative content with the um, pod with MPEN coming out next week and we'll see what the content plans are. Hopefully life camps down a bit soon in terms of all the stuff that's on, but um, I everybody will know that. So anyway, for the weekend, good luck and go fuck, and I'll see you all again soon.